this video, we'll provide an overview of the new Scottish Cycling Affiliation System that all clubs will need to use to affiliate to Scottish Cycling in 2021. The link that you will receive to access the system will bring you to this home screen. To start off, you need to enter an email address to get your application open. This email address should be done by the club secretary. And then click next. When you enter the email address, you'll then get a unique form ID. It's worth noting this down, that you'll also receive an automatic email to the email address that you put in, which will give you the form ID. You'll need this number if you're going to log back into the club affiliation form, if you're not going to do it in one setting. So if you're an existing club, you'll be able to select your club name from the drop down list. If you're a new club, you can just click add new and then type in the name of your club. We'll also then be asked what type of club you are. So we've got standard clubs, commercial clubs, school clubs and associations. And we've also made a distinction with under 18 and not having under 18 members. So for this first video, we're just going to consider standard clubs, including under 18 members. And we're also going to say that we are a GoRide accredited club. So you'll then put in your club secretary details. And you've also got the option with the club secretary if you want to include their details on the British Cycling Club Finger tool. So you just tick yes to that. You then can share the details for your different social media sites. So club, your club Facebook page, your club Twitter page, Instagram and website. These are all optional, so if you don't have them, then you don't need to fill those in. Then providing the name of your club chair or president. again for all of the contact details for each uh, different committee member you're providing the same the first name the surname their email address their mobile number and the British Cycling membership number also do that for the club treasurer And there's also an optional one at the bottom for the club coaching lead. If you don't have one of them, then that's fine to leave that empty. You then have to put in the address for correspondence. So this is for any correspondence from Scottish Cycling or British Cycling. And just select the local authority and put in the necessary details for the address. The next page is asking you to provide full address and postcodes of your main club training venues or meetup points. This should include meetup points in parks or car parks that your club may use. So the first one is your primary location of your club. Please note we'll use this location as the home base of your club, which may differ from the correspondence address. And when you're also uh, giving information about your locations of your different club activities you can tick and say what activities take place there and for what groups you can also add information for two other venues as well if you've got multiple meetup or coaching locations within the club you then have to indicate all the activities offered by your club so it's simple tick boxes for each different activity that's offered if you have other stuff which isn't covered within these uh, tick boxes, you can also type it in to this section here. The next section is about your club's governance. So we've got a drop down list here uh, to pick what legal status your club has. If you're unsure about what your legal status is, 
you can click here for a handy resource guide and there's also a video here that you can watch with more information about legal statuses. There's then a question about your club constitution. So tick yes to have a constitution. When your constitution was last updated and you then click here to upload a copy of your constitution. So it's quite simple, you just click the button, select a file and you can go in and upload, in a, fi upload a file and then what you see there that's it been uploaded. When was your last AGM? Just use the date calendar to select the last date of AGM and then you can proceed to the next screen. Scottish Cycling encourages clubs to adopt the following policies or create their own. So this section captures a number of different policies which are available to clubs on the Scottish Cycling website. Some of these will be introduced as part of the minimum operating standards this year and all of them will be in place from the minimum operating standards in 2022. So if you've got these in place already, so if this year is, is compulsory to the wellbeing and protection policy, but if you have the rest, then you can just tick the boxes. If you're looking to view the details of the different policies uh, to download the templates, you just click these buttons, and it'll take you through to the templates that are available uh, from Scottish Cycling. Now, if your club has under 18 members, you have to have a wellbeing and protection officer. So tick this box here. You then just provide their name and surname, their email address, And if you've got a second WPO, you can tick this box here and you'll see more boxes appear to enter the, their details. The club I'm setting up has just got one WPO. <clears throat> you then confirm that your club has got a PVG secondary contract in place with Scottish Cycling. Tick yes. If you're not sure, then this will be flagged up in the system for us and we'll be able to come back to you about that. But for the moment, we'll just say yes. Then confirm that your WPO has completed the following training. So child wellbeing protection and sport and CWP training. You can also click this button here, which will take you through to our training section of our website, which has got details of the current training offer. We also encourage clubs to have codes of conduct in place uh, within your club. Templates can be found by clicking this link here, but you can also just acknowledge these here if you've already got those codes of conduct in place and also a disciplinary process. And all, all the templates for them can be found there. And this will all be part of the minimum operating standards which will be introduced in the 2022 affiliation period. This section is for your club kit. Uh, so we're asking you to please upload a copy of the design template for your club kit. If you don't have a copy of the design template, please upload a photo of a member wearing club kit standing front facing. If your club does not have club kit, then you just tick this box here. If you do get club kit in the future, then we ask that you submit kit designs to info at scottishcycling.org.uk in advance of producing any club kit just so we can make sure that it's com compliant and doesn't clash uh, with any other kit that's already out there. But I do have club kit so I select the main colour of my kit. If, if you've got a secondary colour you can click that. You can then upload an image of your kit. So that's the top uploaded. You can then also select an image of uh, select the colour of your shorts. Again, if you've got a, a primary colour and a secondary colour, and then again, upload an image of your shorts. And same as before with the constitutions, you can see that the images there have uploaded, and then you can then proceed to the next screen. So the next one is about uh, your active coaches and leaders in your club. If you don't have any, then you can just leave this section blank. But if you do, then we really wanna capture all of the active coaches and leaders that you have in your club. A coach leader is active if they deliver a minimum of two hours a month for your club. Please don't include people within your club that are qualified but don't deliver regularly. We recognise that due to COVID-19, many, many clubs may not have delivered their usual activity, so please answer this question based on what has been delivered since January 2020. Please only record Scottish and British cycling qualifications. So uh, in my club here, uh, I've got three coaching level one. I've got three uh, males doing coaching level one, three females doing coaching level one. I've got five males doing coaching level two and five females doing coaching level two. 
And for all of the coaching qualifications, we're asking you to count an individual's highest coaching qualification only. So if they are, have done a level two DSU, then you're only going to capture that individual within the DSU column. You're not going to double count them within the level one or level two. So I've also got three there and two here. And you'll then see that those numbers have all been told at the bottom. So 10 males and 11 females. We then ask you to confirm that all coaches are up to date with the child wellbeing and protection and sport training and that all coaches in the area have a PPG. If any of the above coaches are paid, then we ask you to note it in this box here. We're then also looking to capture the number of volunteers that you have within your club. So we can click here, type that in. I should also add up at the top here, if you have any coaches that are under 18, you can tick this box here. And then what you'll notice is a second layer of boxes appear under each of the qualifications, which allows you to add in any under 18 coaches that you might have. So I've got a few of them. So I'll just add them in there. And again, that's updated the totals at the bottom. We're also looking to find out how many people volunteer within your club in a standard week and in total approximately how many hours do all those volunteers commit. So let's use those numbers uh, as a part of our considerations for that. Uh, and just a best guess of what you think the total hours committed are for those volunteers. Then click next. And then we're now looking to capture the number of club members that you have. And again, you'll see that totals at the bottom and that gives you an overall total. On the club membership page, we're also asking to capture the non-playing members. So a non-playing member is someone who volunteers or helps run your club, but doesn't take part in any club activity as a participant. So you might have a couple of people that fit into that category. So you can just add them in here. And then you get that overall total. If you have any members which have declared any of the following disabilities, you can then add that in in this section here. And then also note if any of those people that have declared disabilities are coaches or mountain bike slash ride leaders. We're also looking to try and capture any impact the club has been having in the wider community. So if you've done work with any of the following groups, then please tick away, tick away on those boxes. If there's other, group, other groups that you've engaged with that aren't included there, you can specify that in this box here. And also, if possible, give us a brief description of the activities that you've used to engage with the above target groups. If you've not done any of that, then you can, you can leave that page and you arrive at the final page. So the affiliation fees are obviously different depending on the type of the club, but for a standard club, it's £98 of £25 discount before the 31st of December. If you have any sponsor details uh, on your club kit, for example, you can add the name of uh, four sponsors for £68 and any further sponsors are registered free. For go ride clubs, uh, sponsors are, are free to add. So if you've got names of sponsors, you can add them there. And then you just, once you've done that, you can then submit to Scottish Cycling and that is it. It will then redirect you through to the payment screen, which will allow you to make a payment for your affiliation.